Hello, YouTube. My name is Jacinda Gonzalez, and I'm coming at you with a video um, about gender construction. In this video, we're going to be talking about what gender construction is and uh, how our bodies become gendered beings. We're also going to talk a little bit about um, how gender construction plays a role in creating social hierarchies within society and what that means for bodies who's don't, who don't already align with gender expectations. Um, first, I want to begin by talking about gender. There's an article titled The Socially Constructed Body by Judith Lorb and Patricia Martin. In this article, the authors describe gender as being partially determined by uh, physiological development, by environmental factors such as nutrition and access to food, um, but they also assert that beyond physiology, culture and social factors heavily construct gender and what it means to be male or female. And when we talk about social factors that construct gender, we're talking about the attitudes, the values, and beliefs pertaining to what society considers a masculine body or a feminine body. Uh, for example, within our Western society, our culture believes a man is someone who is physically tough, uh, who has a body that is noticeably manly, right? Men have muscular builds. They have facial hair, they don't cry, and we hear that. We hear that in society. Boys don't cry. They're smart and powerful. They provide food for their family, and uh, because they have a family, right? Uh, because they are straight, heterosexual men, they like sports, violent entertainment, and uh, they fit nicely into one side of the gender spectrum. Now, on the other side, our society has social scripts for what defines a woman. A woman is feminine. She's dainty, has a small physique, okay? Um, she has preferably large breasts, a small waist, a nice butt. Uh, women are supposed to be beautiful beings. They're sexy, but beyond that, they're sexual objects of desire. Uh, right? Women are expected to portray themselves as these as these sexual objects. They wear makeup, they wear revealing, tight-fitting clothing. Uh, they're emotional creatures opposed to men who are not. They they tend to they tend to the men in their lives. They're there to serve them. So we're told they're mothers because their bodies were intended to make babies, right? Women are straight, heterosexual beings who fit neatly into the opposite side of the gender spectrum. Uh, looking into that, it's like, these aren't, these aren't my beliefs, the, but they're the popular belief. They're the cultural and social beliefs. They're the scripts that we're supposed to conform to. And in turn, these, these scripts create gendered bodies. As a result, the gender dichotomy creates a social hierarchy that places the conforming males and the conforming female bodies at the top of the hierarch hierarchical pyramid and the non-conforming bodies, the bodies in between that spectrum, at the bottom of that pyramid. And the non-conforming bodies when at the bottom, they have limited access to social prestige and social power. These scripts marginalize large groups of individuals who, for whatever reason, do not fit neatly into the male-female category. Transgender beings, transsexual beings, um, gay and lesbians, anyone who doesn't conform to social scripts for being a male or being a traditional female are in between that category. They're in the non-conforming bodies and they're at, they're at the bottom of that hierarchical pyramid. 
Um, take, for example, public restrooms. It's no surprise that public restrooms have become politi politicized and groups of individuals are fighting against um, transgender individuals having access to male and female facilities. This is a clear example of how power and privilege are in favor of the conforming bodies who are properly male and female and who, those who are not non-conforming do not have access to those powers. The bodies that are outside gender norms suffer because of social structures that are in place. Part of why public restrooms have become so politicized is because it's a space where private acts become public and where an individual's private parts come into question. Groups opposed to the trans community using facilities, public restroom facilities, display great levels of anxiety towards trans bodies in proximity to their own bodies. And why is that? Why does it matter if a woman's restroom is limited to only sex, female sexed women and not trans women? Why? Why does it matter? Why does it even matter? Well, gender acts as a physical marker of sexuality. When properly performed, gender easily tells others what kind of genitals you have. If you're properly performing femininity, you're telling the world you have a vagina. If you're properly performing masculinity, you're telling the world you have a penis. And when those things are occurring, when, you're, when you are performing those roles, you easily indicate to others who you could potentially mate with. These scripts are created to uphold, uphold the gender homogeny and the heteronormative society that we live in. Issues arise for heteronormal individuals when non-conforming bodies begin gender bending, like transgenders or transsexuals, gays and lesbians, when those lines are crossed or blurred and gender is improperly displayed, uh, gender scripts are therefore not clear indicators of what kind of genitalia you have. Heaven forbid a heterosexual man is tricked into being sexually attracted to a transgender because now now there, the transgender is infringing on this heterosexual man's mores and values and how, how dare they, right? How dare we cross those bounds, blur those lines and threaten a heterosexual man's sexuality. Um, like many other social constructs, gender is a tool to create social hierarchy. Uh, and by virtue of definition, a gender hierarchy could not exist without the definitive delineation between genders. Uh, we couldn't, it, it would be imposed upon if we had uh, the gray areas, if we embraced the gray areas, because then the delineation between the genders would be at risk. Our society relies heavily on individuals that perform masculinity and femininity and this is why progression away from a dichotomy, a progression away from heteronormative scripts is so heavily fought at the political forefront. This is why there's so much controversy against having gender neutral restroom facilities or embracing a gender neutral type of dress or gender neutral options for small children in schools or toys and things like that because they threaten the heteronormative scripts that are already in place and this progression threatens the social framework that our society heavily relies upon. In my next video, I'll be talking a little more about social hierarchies and how our bodies are placed into those scripts.